A Napa guy knows the only way you'd give a freshly minted driver a brand new car is if he promises to never drive it. Instead, let him grind the gears and knock over the neighbor's mailbox in something a little more suited to his skill level. And with over 400,000 parts and a little Napa know-how, he can safely drive something that's nearly as old as he is. It's not perfect, but it's perfect for him. That's Napa know-how. Blog Talk Radio. Well, good evening, folks. And thank you for tuning in with me once again to another edition of True Conservative Radio. And, of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost. And once again, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. It has definitely been some time since I conducted a broadcast here on the Blog Talk Radio Network, and this is episode number 172 for the folks that are keeping track with the broadcast. And if you did hear episode number 171, you know that we had ourselves a little bit of a scare, at least I felt that it was a little bit of a scare. And for you folks that weren't uh, able to tune in or didn't uh, listen to the podcast, well, we had a chopper at about uh, you know 12.30 midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning, circling my home, literally hovering above it to the point where you could hear it on the air. And of course, on the show i speculated that it could have been some kind of uh you know federal intimidation government intimidation whatever i don't know why there's a chopper flying above my home circling it for about 30 or 45 minutes there was no need for it no call for it and it hasn't been the first time since that particular episode folks now of course uh, i've always been a true conservative i've been a businessman i've been a uh, individual who has been a foot soldier for the American family. I uh, always believe that my particular political persuasion and my social persuasion would uh, inevitably be the focal point or the root foundation of the American society that I grew up in and every other sound-minded individual grew up in. But unfortunately, folks, we have found ourselves in a situation that probably the most crookedest, evilest, wickedest individual couldn't have concocted out of their warped, uh, creative imagination. And let me tell you something, folks. Since episode number 171, I have been noticing a variety of different uh, things happening in and around my vicinity, my home. You know, I I started noticing this a while back, but I didn't want to uh, make believe that I was going crazy. I just kind of ignored it because I didn't want to uh, try to hyper-sensationalize myself with any kind of paranoia or anything of that nature. But I remember seeing, you know, in January, you know, uh, ice cream trucks in the middle of winter around my neighborhood coming around here. No, no reason for it. Never seen ice cream trucks before. I'm starting to notice this stuff, folks. And let me tell you, there's been a Uh, I mean, I get all kinds of hate mail and death threats and all this other nonsense, but uh, it seems to me that there is some validity in my suspicion that there is some sort of federal authority looking over the content that I am producing via my blogs and the Blog Talk Radio Network, so on and so forth. So, folks, in lieu of that, we are not going to have the chat room available until further notice. Because, folks, to be completely honest with you, I have been getting a lot of emails from folks stating that uh, uh, this little chat room that this uh, blog talk radio provides is obviously incompetent to do the job, and it allows uh, nefarious hacker, script kitty individuals to hack people's name, uh, yours truly especially, and go into other people's chat rooms and cause a bunch of ruckus. Henceforth, that's why I've had a bunch of skirmishes with a bunch of loser blog talk radio hosts uh, in the past, and it's spilled over here in the broadcast, folks, if you've been listening in and been an avid listener. So unfortunately, we are not going to have a chat room, but I would like for you to please send me your little tweets or your little Twitters or whatever you want to call this crap, all right, and the name to send it at is Ghost Politics, all one word, no underscores, 
Uh, Ghost Politics is the name to send your tweets by. There will be no chat room whatsoever, folks, because once again, uh, I want to protect the individuals who listen to my commentary, who actually believe in what I am trying to convey in the commentary on this broadcast. There's actually individuals that are dedicated to the things that I have projected, that I have produced on this broadcast, and I want to, you know, keep their uh, identifications, uh, you know, uh, somewhat uh, concealed. It's obvious that this uh, blog talk radio network and these chats and all this other nonsense is not, it's not very safe for folks. So I want to uh, go ahead and just uh, just cut out the chat room altogether, and I know there's going to sour on somebody's parade, it's going to put a sour taste in people's mouths that they're not going to be able to you know, watch a freaking chat room while they're listening to the true conservative radio broadcast. But folks, what you should be listening to is the substance that I'm conveying on the broadcast. I've been doing it for a long time, and let me tell you, this is a an important show if I've ever known one. Now, of course, I've been laying low, folks, since the infamous 171 episode where, you know, choppers were going over my house at, you know, one in the morning, circling it for 30 or 45 minutes. I don't know what, what, what the attempt was. I don't know what they were trying to do. I don't know. I don't care. But I've taken the proper precautions to, uh, you know, uh, protect myself, to protect my family. Uh, I understand now that the things that I'm conveying on this broadcast are obviously not in favor with the bureaucrats that are in power today. I understand that the things that I'm trying to convey is not very popular with the Wall Street socialists that are in bed with these bureaucrats in Washington today. And we're going to go ahead and get into that right now. Now, folks, I'm going to take a few calls here uh, here in the broadcast, but for the most part, I want individuals to be listening very closely. I want you to be listening very closely at what's happening to our country today. I have always stated Ever since I began this broadcast, that we are seeing a systematic transition from what we knew of as a constitutional republic that operated economically on capitalism into some sort of quasi, and I used to say communism. But if you take a good look at what has happened within the past month since I have been gone, I mean this rapid pace of, uh, you know, uh, uh, Senate investigation committees questioning Goldman Sachs executives and uh, Barack Obama naming a debt commission and uh, uh, and, and you know these dumb liberals trying to shove this financial reform bill down our throats. It's happening within a snap. They're trying to shove it down our holes. But I want you to pay very close attention at what I'm about to tell you, folks, because this may be one of the most important shows that I've ever conducted, because what's happening here right now is so complicated, it's meant to be complicated. And the reason it's meant to be complicated, folks, is because they don't want you to understand what's going on. All they want to do, and when I mean they, I mean the liberals, they just want to tell you some little happy-go-lucky story that you're going to get houses in the sky and a damn chicken in every pot and a Cadillac in every driveway and money's going to grow on trees and they're going to give you everything to everybody no matter what. But, folks, in this financial reform bill, well, you know what, before I even get into the financial reform bill, let's take a look at what happened. For you folks that have been keeping up with my blog, and for you folks that uh, don't know the blog address, please go read that uh, blog that I recently entered. Ghostpolitics.blogspot.com is the official true conservative blog. Ghostpolitics, all one word, no underscores. Ghostpolitics at uh, Dot blogspot.com. I discussed in that blog how uh, a couple of weeks ago we had this, uh, or I don't know when it was, I think it was last week, excuse me, I don't know when the hell it was. All this thing has been happening so fast, folks, it's hard to keep up with. But luckily I got a little bit of time on my hands, given the fact that the uh, this government is trying to jeopardize the integrity of my business, trying to jeopardize the uh, the integrity of my private enterprise. I've had a lot of time to analyze what exactly these liberals are trying to push down our throats. Now, when they had, remember these little stupid Goldman Sachs, little political theater that they had with the little executives? I'm sure everybody saw that. It was meant to be seen. That's why this liberal media 
decided to air the damn thing. Some of them uh, aired the whole damn 10 hours, 11 hours, whatever the hell it was. It was crap. It was pure political theater. Now, why was it political theater? Why were the Goldman Sachs executives standing you know, there supposedly under oath? They had their little stupid right hand raised, but they, they were supposedly under oath, right? These doofuses actually get on the stand, and you know, they do the typical, uh, I don't recall, uh, I don't recall legal jargon to get away from any question that would have incriminated them. And let me tell you something. I, I found it rather funny that these jagoffs on this Senate investigations panel that were questioning these corporate socialists at Goldman Sachs. I found it funny, like, uh, the, these dumb politicians, you know they're just robotic Manchurian candidate goons. These morons actually put on a face like they cared. Like they were actually trying to get to the bottom or something, like that stupid, dumbass, ridiculous, chia pet looking Carl Levin giving a damn 20, 30 minute entry speech, like we gave a crap about what his perspective was on the whole situation. He was supposed to be just going out there and asking some questions, right? But anyway, folks, right before the whole political theater fiasco between the Goldman Sachs executives and the Senate investigations panel, right before it happened, Barack Obama came out in the press conference right there in front of the White House. Yeah? And, oh, yeah, he was out there with some stupid Keynesian economics doofus, some four-eyed, freckle-faced bookworm. And why did Obama make a press conference perfectly timed with the supposed testimony on this political theater between the Senate investigations panel and the Goldman Sachs executives? Because they're trying to put this whole transition of what we knew of as capitalism into quasi-corporate socialism. I don't even know what you want to call this crap. But what did Obama say right before uh, this supposed testimony? by Goldman Sachs executives. Well, he outlined that he was going to use his executive power to nominate, uh, a, I don't know, a board of, of morons to figure out how to bring down the national deficit. That's right. A debt commission is what Obama decided to go ahead and tell the American public he was doing. Now, why is all this interconnected? I mean, you know, it's very complicated. I know there's a lot of people saying, oh, you know what, Ghost? That's a lot for me to understand there, boy. I barely have enough attention span to see who's winning the game. And you're telling me this and that. Well, I told you, you stupid, milky-licking ass clown. You're going to have to pay close attention at what's going on here. Because remember, bureaucrats are in charge here. Bureaucrats. And bureaucrats... Uh, perfects, uh, purposely. They purposely make things complicated so the average simpleton can just sit there and guzzle down their beer and watch the game while the bureaucrats get more and more power in everybody's life. Now, why am I bringing up Obama and this whole debt commission thing? Well, first and foremost, he's already letting, you know, getting the ball rolling on a potential either tax increase or a complete cut in entitlements. And he's using the debt commission as a patsy so that he doesn't look like the bad guy when he has to start cutting these losers' welfare checks. Now, if you heard the speech when he announced this debt commission, he went on and on about blaming past administrations for uh, you know, putting all kinds of deficits on the American uh, government's dime, on the American people's dime. He was blaming everybody but himself and his own liberal regime, even though his liberal regime and his tenure had, had blown more money than all presidents previous. And he's going to nominate, the, or, you know, whatever, he's going to appoint this debt commission. And what is the debt commission really for, folks? I'm telling you, it's a patsy. He's going to have to either raise taxes, and you know he can't raise taxes. We already heard uh, what is it, Ben Bernanke uh, out there. He was, you know, speaking at one of these damn, uh, I don't know, economic conferences. You know, that's all these 
uh, economic bookworms do. He was out there at an economic conference and warned the American government that they can't raise taxes too much because then they're going to make no incentive, absolutely no incentive for anybody to actually go out there and work. And if you want my personal opinion, the economic landscape for that type of definition is happening currently right now in America. And what's the other option? Well, the other option is to cut entitlements, folks. And remember, Barack Obama has given all these losers entitlement after entitlement, housing voucher program. For, they've just given them health care, given them uh, more, uh, was it, 20, 30 percent more on their food card. He's given them the works. And now he's going to use this debt commission to try to take it back. Now, that's just the first part. Okay, after, you know, the Obama announces debt commission, you had these goons the, the, the Goldman Sachs executives and the Senate Investigations Panel conduct this political theater for the American public. Now, why was this uh, you know, political theater conducted for the American public? Well, it wants to put the face of capitalism in a bad, disgusting, greedy light. I mean, right after the Goldman Sachs and their you know, weasel, I, I don't recall legal language, uh, you know, the average moron in America was like, I don't like capitalism anymore. Look at those people on Wall Street. Those people are greedy. Capitalism is bad. They're rich, and we're not. It's not fair. Instead of actually looking at the situation at hand and understanding what is going forth here in America today. Now, folks, for you idiots that actually believe that the Goldman Sachs executives are actually, have actually anything to do with capitalism, you deserve a good swift kick in the ass because you are a complete buffoonery. The bottom line is, folks, the government is Goldman Sachs, you morons. The government is Goldman Sachs. And why do I say that? Well, why don't you take a look at all those idiots on the Senate investigations panel that were questioning these Goldman Sachs executive goons. And you, then you'll realize that a lot of those people that were acting as if they were getting to the bottom of something, you know, and waving their fingers and uh, uh, using foul language and all this other crap during that dumbass political theatrical garbage, you're going to find out that those same executives donated tremendous amounts of money to those same politicians' campaigns. Oh, oh, of course. That's exactly what it is, folks. And that's a fact. That's an utter fact. Not to mention that our government, like I've stated during Stimulus Package 2, I, start, I mean, if you go back in the archives when I broadcasted right before Stimulus Package 2 was passed, by this liberal regime, I stated that this was an open raid on the American taxpaying system, and it was a socially engineered thing. You can look back. This is one of the many things that I prognosticated, folks, that these damn liberals were going to orchestrate this uh, engineered open raid on the American tax system, and we all saw, what was it, uh, uh, close to a trillion dollars in stimulus package two money. Where that money went, well, your guess is as good as mine, but a lot of it went to these same financial institutions that the liberal regime is now claiming is, oh, it's evil capitalism. Look at them. Look at them give themselves big bonuses. It's evil capitalism. They're bastards. They're just sorry-ass capitalistic greedy bastards. No, what is happening here, folks, is a complete engineered takeover of the American capitalist system. Now, do you understand that if we would have just let these financial institutions, and I'm not talking about banks, I'm talking about financial institutions like Goldman Sachs, you know, uh, J.P. Morgan, Morgan Stanley, whatever the hell they're called, all those little financial investment firms. If we were to just let those idiots fall under, we wouldn't even be talking about this right now. We wouldn't even have had this little political theater with the Goldman Sachs executives and the Senate investigations panel. We wouldn't even have to worry about it. We, would have, we, would have any, we wouldn't be talking about bailouts. We wouldn't have been talking about uh, 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 big bonuses for uh, investment bankers. We wouldn't have been talking about any of this crap. 
But the reason we're talking about it is because the liberal regime bailed these people out. Do you understand that that's why these executives have these big bonuses? Because they're contractually obligated to, to you know, get those bonuses if the uh, corporate account shows a particular profit, no matter how they got that profit. Even though it came out of your and my money, uh, if you're a taxpayer, if you're a, one of these entitlement mooching pieces of crap, well, screw you, all right? So that's exactly what this whole Goldman Sachs executive testimony in front of the Senate investigations panel was all about. It was just to put a bad face on capitalism, and it worked, folks. Like I said in the blog, it worked. It worked perfectly. Now you've got this liberal regime utilizing the political capital that they gained from that political theater spectacle, uh, that Goldman Sachs testimony. They're using this to try to shove and cram this damn financial reform bill down our throats. And let's talk a little bit about the financial reform bill for a second. huh? Who, who's crafting the financial reform bill? Well, none other than the chairman of the banking committee, you know, the, the, the banking, housing, urban affair, whatever, whatever the uh, traditional name of the committee is called, the chairman of this particular committee is none other than Senator Chris Dodd, the sleazeball himself. And Senator Chris Dodd uh, has been given the, I guess, authority to craft this little legislation because his regime is in power, and he's, of course, an old sacred career bureaucratic cow, that's out there, you know, you know, somewhat politically connected. Now, Chris Dodd over here has claimed that he is not going to seek a re-election. He's not seeking re-election. So, you know, he, he, you know, as if he's crafting this financial reform bill as some sort of a patriot or something. Yet he he sits on the or he's the chairman of the what was it banking committee. And this idiot is not seeking re-election for the next term, and yet it's been documented that this moron actually still receives campaign contributions from individuals related to Goldman Sachs and other investment companies. I mean, this is the America that we're living in, folks. I mean, this is not, I'm not joking. This is all factual. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be blogging about this ghostpolitics.blogspot.com is the blog. I'm going to be having uh, all the documentation about this is an actual fact. But the moron crafting this legislation, the Dodd Finance Reform Bill, whatever you want to call this crap, is actually this imbecile who is a puppet for the investment industry. Now, let me explain why Chris Dodd's a puppet. Because he gets more campaign contributions from investment firms than almost anybody else. And when I, see, when I say almost, uh, Chuck Schumer, from my research, seems to be getting the crux of all the money from the investment firm community. And remember, the investment firm community were the same ones bailed out with our taxpaying dollars. So what's in this reform bill that they're trying to shove down our hole? Huh? What's in this reform bill that they're trying to shove down our hole, all right? Well, I'll tell you. They're trying to shove down our hole this idea that government is going to save the day from a potential financial crisis. What's the remedy, according to the Chris Dodd financial reform bill, that's being shoved down the pike of political process out here? Well, it's going to give, according to all reports that are out here, and according to the bill itself, it's going to give unlimited authority to the FDIC and the Secretary of Treasury. That's right. Old Tim Geithner is going to try to get more bureaucratic power with this bill. Now, what does the FDIC and the Secretary of Treasury have the authority to do? I mean, what is all this? What are you talking about, Ghost? Well, folks, let me explain. It's a very complicated bill. Remember, you know, Chris Dodd has been sitting on that committee for a long period of time. He knows all the language. He knows how to uh, make things in such a way that, you know, uh, the average layman can't even understand it. So bear with me. It's a very complicated bill. 
But this is definitely one of the things that you need to listen to, folks, because it literally ends the idea of private enterprise. And let me repeat that again. It literally ends the idea of private enterprise. And I'd like to hear from you, folks. I know there's a lot of people on hold. Uh, you know, stay on hold, folks, right after I discuss what's in this Chris Dodd bill. I want to hear from you. If you want to send me some tweets, uh, go ahead and do so at Ghost Politics. All one word, no underscores. I want to hear what you have to say about this uh, dumbass malarkey that's being, you know, spewed out out here by the liberal regime. Now, what's going to happen is it's going to give the Secretary of Treasury and the FDIC unlimited authority over business matters. They're going to have a $50 billion orderly liquidation fund, okay, and that's going to be a revolving $50 billion orderly liquidation fund, all right, and that's going to be financed by assessments on about 60 bank holding and insurance companies that have $50 billion or greater in assets. And how is the banks going to keep up to date with these revolving $50 billion orderly liquidation fund? Well, they're going to charge you for you know extra bank bank finances and transaction fees and you know all that crap. That's how it's going to be financed. Okay, so right off the bat, this authority, all right, this authority that's going to be given to the FDIC and the Treasury. Uh, secretary, old Timmy Geithner, it's going to be funded by a $50 billion orderly liquidation fund that's financed by assessments on about 60 bank holding and insurance companies worth $50 billion or more in assets. And of course, those assessments are going to be funded by the American people through, like I said, higher costs of financial transactions, you know, checks and other fees. All right. Now, what this authority can do, it, it can seize any company. Let me repeat that again. This authority that's going to be given to the Secretary of Treasury and the FDIC has the authority to seize any company that it deems a uh, too risky or that deems uh, that is going to be deemed in the possibility of default. The possibility. So this is very loose language. This means that, you know, if you happen to be deemed default by the Secretary of Treasury or the FDIC, this authority can seize your company. And I don't know about you folks, but I would go out to say, and I belong to my local chamber of commerce, I would say about 95% of most businesses are not operating, you know, in the traditional sense of, you know, a capitalized company. A lot of these individuals have uh, you know, credit lines and loans that these individuals pay on a consistent basis. I mean, there's a lot of people that use their payroll, uh, you know, and, and, and pay, uh, use credit for their payroll. There's a lot of people who, uh, uh, there, there's a lot of people that use this type of nonsense for for a lot of things. You got to excuse me, folks. I got sidetracked. I'm getting I'm getting a whole bunch of t uh, tweets here. Now, what this bureaucratic authority is going to be able to do once you're deemed def or about to be default to your creditors, and all they have to do is interpret this, all right? I mean, uh, there is no definition on what this is, folks. This is a very loose definition. Now, what they do when they seize your company, they take money from this new $50 billion orderly liquidation fund. They take that money, and then they... Pay all your debts to all the creditors that you had outstanding. Then the FDIC appoints a new board of directors. Yeah, that's right. You don't own your company anymore. You know, If they decide that they want to seize your company, you don't own it anymore. You're just a jerk off over there just kind of, hey, yeah, it's the government's now. See ya. Oh, yeah, and by the way, there's no congressional or judicial way of challenging this new authority. According to the bill, there's no way to challenge the supreme super financial authority by the FDIC and the Secretary of Treasury. I mean, this is an absolute fact, folks. Now, let me get back to what I was talking about. Your company is seized, all right? The FDIC comes in, takes over your company, fires you, gets rid of you as the owner, get, takes money from the $50 billion revolving orderly liquidation fund, 
pays back all the creditors that you owed, all right, then it puts your company in something called a bridge financial company. That's what they're going to call this thing. You know, once you've been taken over by the FDIC and the Secretary of Treasury, you are now a what they're going to call a bridge financial company that is still going to be run. I mean, you know, it, it's still going to continue with business. The only difference is, is that this new revolving fifty billion dollar orderly liquidation fund is going to pay back all your creditors, so that it'll put the company back from the red or uh, from the red into the black. Then it's going to recapitalize the company with the same $50 billion in that revolving orderly liquidation fund. I kid you not, folks. This is in the freaking bill. Once they appoint a new board of directors, once they restaff, once they recapitalize your company, the government's doing this. Remember, FDIC, you know, Secretary of Treasury, once they recapitalize your company, the Secretary of Treasury then has the authority to issue common stock in your company because, you know, your company's capitalized now. It's recapitalized with this new $50 billion orderly liquidation fund that's going to be revolving and going to be always having $50 billion in that account because they're going to be assessing the banks for this $50 billion orderly liquidation fund. Okay? So, what does this mean? This means that once the Secretary of Treasury issues common stock on your company, well, then the Secretary of Treasury can either sit on it as part of his own personal government-funded portfolio or sell it outright to the same creditors that got bailed out in the first place in this whole process with the $50 billion orderly liquidation fund. And I kid you not, folks, this is the new America. And I know that I've gotten up on here and I've tried to say, hey, call your congressmen, hey, call your senators, go out there and, I don't know, do, do something. Do something about this. But, I mean, I, what is there to be done? I mean, the American public, folks, a bunch of morons. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, the, the American public is, is are complete idiots. I mean, you, we have to understand, folks, I read a statistic somewhere that 70%, 70% of the American public is collecting some form of government entitlement. 70%. And that was socially engineered by these damn liberals. So, in essence, folks, the majority of America are, are, are losers. And you see, the reason that they're losers is because they decided that, I, I don't want to go out and work. I, I want to collect, uh, you know, 3000 a month in disability uh, because I've got fibromyalgia. I've got fibromyalgia, and I am going to collect 3000 on disability, Social Security, Medicaid, Medicaid, I'm collecting all. I got fibromyalgia. I mean, do you understand, folks, that capitalism is dying? Capitalism is dying, folks. And I've risked my neck, seriously risked my neck, uh, trying to inform folks about the truth, about actual factual matters out here, actual legislation, and all I get is, a, you know, uh, obviously a bunch of morons trying to prank call, agitate the show. You know, I get government authorities, you know, follow me around like I'm some, some goddamn Sam G. and Khan of mob boss or some crap. You know, just because I'm, you know, practicing my First Amendment freedom of speech rights. I mean, you know, you got the American worker turning itself into American moocher. And it makes me sick, folks. I just I can't believe that all this is happening. But welcome to the new America, folks. No more private business for you. Because now, if the FDIC or if the Secretary of Treasury deems your company about the brink of default, which that's pretty much, I mean, if you really want to analyze every company and every small business, that's probably about 95% of small businesses working on good lines of credit. 
that they're paying on, that they're paying interest on. But under this new authority, the FDIC can say, well, you know, he poses or this company poses a risk. It poses a great risk of default, and it could jeopardize the financial industry, like all the losers when they went out and bought houses uh, on $25,000 year incomes. You know, they, they bought $250,000 houses. And, no, we gotta, we got to stop this. we got to take over the company. we got to take over the company, recapitalize the company, and then sell the company stock to the, to, to the real financial corporate capitalists. That's what we need. I don't know. I want to hear from you. 646-652-4869 is the number to call here. Uh, and once again, folks, uh, if you got anything to say, give me a call. There's some tweets coming in. Uh, there's some people that are, you know, saying that, uh, oh, you know, I, I'm, I'm boring people. Uh, I'm boring people to death and all this other crap. All right? Give me a break. I mean, I, I, and I've got other people saying that Bill Wagner got banned from BTR. Do you think I give a rat's ass? All right, my ass bleeds for that stupid long-haired loser. I don't care, all right? I don't give a crap. All right, I, I mean, you know, who cares? I'm not talking about stupid-ass Bill Wagner. We're talking about America, damn it. We're talking about how our country is being taken over. And you know, folks, if you really analyze what's happening here, it's not communism. It's not Karl Marx's perspective of what the idea was of communism. No, this is Frederick Engels' idea of socialism. And for all you folks that are political theorist uh, uh, junkies out here that like to you know, read about political theory, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Because this is what it is. Anyway, uh, give me a tweet, all right? Ghost Politics is the Twitter name. And we're going to take a couple of callers here. And, you know, if we get a couple of fruity-ass callers, I'm not taking any more. All right, and this is a serious subject matter. And especially these kids. These kids are the, are the ones that are going to have to be uh, raised in this Orwellian society. You know, I mean, where, you know, we've got the super rich and the rest of the peasants that are happy with the peanuts thrown at them. And they're able to go out to, you know, football games and basketball games. And, yay, look at me. My life's significant now. Oh, yeah, look at me. I, I got a, a Facebook and a MySpace page. Uh, I, I use uh, what other people created and put it on my page to represent my uh, own personality and my own originality. Oh, yeah, great. 646-652-4869. Uh, we got 561. You're on the air. Oh, fuck yeah, Bill Wagner won. Oh, shut up, you stupid moron. You see, this is what I'm talking about. And then they wonder why Bill Wagner got banned from BTR, for heaven's sake. You know I mean? Give me a break. Wouldn't be surprised if there was some nefarious activity that related to that crap, all right? He looks a little freaky. 914, you're on the air. Hey, what's up, Ghost? I've been listening for a while. I'm a conservative, and... I gotta say though, listen to you talk about this Goldman Sachs stuff. You sound a little bit like a crazy conspiracy theorist or something. Why? Why is that? I mean, it's an actual documented fact. These people have all been funded by these people. What are you talking about? Yeah, and they're all trying to take over. And next week you're gonna talk about when aliens came and stuck mud chips up yeah. your ass. And uh, all that. Give me. Come on. Come on. <laughs> give me a break. You with the mud chips already. Good lord. I mean, you know, let's do a barrel roll, huh? Is that what y'all want to hear? Barrel roll, barrel roll. Give me a break. I mean, we're talking about serious subject matters here, folks. I'm serious. I mean, you know, a, a lot of you people don't even sound like you got peach fuzz pubes on your nads, and you have the audacity to sit up here and call uh, somebody like myself who is drawing the line in the sand, it's either going to be capitalism or death for me, and that's how I'm going down. And you idiots, all you want to do is do a stupid barrel roll. And as a matter of fact, I've been looking at some of these dumbass little barrel roll videos on, uh, on YouTube. You know, there was an, you know, and I hate to be bringing up this Canadian bacon bastard Tom Green. But apparently, you know, the, the, this uh, Tom Green one-ball bastard is obviously, uh, you know, another a person of interest when it comes to this barrel roll and all this other crap. Well, I actually saw the type of riffraff that's actually behind this barrel roll crap. 
there, there was a moron that, was, that actually went out in, you know, somewhere in L.A. with a barrel roll T-shirt so that he could be found by Tom Green and his little camera, and, and he freaked out. Like, I, I can't believe it. I'm, I'm talking to Tom Green. I got barrel roll. We're trying to make you crazy, Tom. We're trying to make you crazy. I mean, did, uh, you, I, I would like for you all to see that particular little barrel roll video if you could. Because if you look at that loser, you know, I mean, this idiot couldn't even find himself, uh, you know, one of those little print transfers so he can put, you know, at least iron on a barrel roll or, or something like that. And he couldn't spray on a barrel roll. No, no, this idiot took, you know, some Sharpie and decided to get some, you know, a crustated, uh, you know, sweat-stained T-shirt. And he actually wrote barrel roll out there like, you know, some cheese whiz guzzling piece of trailer park chaw chewing trash and actually had you know some sort of i don't know uh, i don't know what you're trying to accomplish i don't understand it i mean i know you kids are living with your mom and dad and you think that it's going to be great and you can just kind of sit on your ass and and play on the internet and you know do prank calls and barrel rolls but you know when you grow up you ass clowns you are the idiots that are going to be enslaved. And you know what? I shouldn't even say enslaved because at least slaves were worth something. You know, slaves were at least commodities. You were below slaves, you morons. I mean, you, you people provide no significance. You are nothing to this society. If you idiots were to somehow all hang yourselves, no one would give a rat's ass. You want to know why? Because you're useless. And you want to know why you're useless? Because you have no integrity and no respect for yourself that you actually believe that you're accomplishing something by going out and doing these ridiculous, dumbass, little, uh, stupid tricks, and when in essence all you're doing is giving media plug to, to stupid, fruity morons that create message boards like 4chan and e-bombs. That's what you idiots are doing. You, you idiots are, 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 are walking advertisements. It's disgusting. When in actuality, your country is being sold out from under you. Now, let me tell you, I know a lot of these 4 channers and a lot of these e-bombs pricks. I know they're not all from America. I know that for a fact. Or I know that there's a lot of Canadian assholes. Uh, I know there's a lot of idiots from Europe. And let's talk about those places for a little bit, shall we? Let's talk about old Europe. Well, why are Europeans trying to agitate the American youth into doing barrel roll and all this other crap? Why, why do you think they're doing it? Well, why don't you take a good look at Europe right now? Why don't you take a look at Greece that's damn near in civil unrest because it's bankrupt because of its dumbass little liberal entitlement, uh, you know, socialistic idea? Let's talk about the rain, uh, the, the, the wave of bankruptcy that's going to hit the European Union. I mean, you think Greece is the only country that's going to go bankrupt? Oh, yeah, and by the way, our tax dollars, $7 billion of our tax dollars, is going to go to help save the Greece economy from its own socialistic crap. So that's even more money on you stupid barrel roll kids uh, that, that you're going to have to work off. And you're going to have to work it off. I mean, don't you understand it? You think that you're just going to sit on your fat ass and you're going to get unemployment, you're going to get free housing vouchers, and you're going to get, uh, you know, uh, food cards. You think you're going to get it all your life? I mean, don't you understand? Barack Obama is named the stupid debt commission, and he's going to pull the rug right from under you losers. And then what are you going to do? You're going to be like all these other idiots that have been going out and committing random acts of violence because, oh, I lost my house. I lost my plane. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna do a barrel roll nosedive into a building because oh I lost my house. I'm talking about the Joseph Stack. That's what I'm referring to, Joe Stack, that idiot who decided to you know do a barrel roll nosedive into the damn uh, Austin IRS building that's not too far from where I'm located currently. All because, oh, I can't have my house, and I can't have my car, nobody can. 
even though I was fiscally irresponsible and I was the one that put my name on the dotted line and I'm the one that obligated myself to all these financial responsibilities? No, no. If I can't have my plane, if I can't have my house, no one can. And before I kill myself, I'm going to inspire a communist revolution. I mean, it's just an utter disgrace, man. I mean, seriously, I mean, do you, know, do you people care? Do you give two rats asses? All right? I mean, I, I'm just asking you that simple question. And if you happen to be a young person, seriously. I mean, I know that, hey, I'm young, I'm stupid, you know, I'm invincible, I don't care, nothing's going to happen to me, you know, I'm, I'm this, I'm that, I, I like Justin Bieber, and I like, you know, I'm like, watch Hannah Montana and all this other crap. But, you know, you morons are going to grow up. And when you morons grow up, you're never going to be the big star. You're never going to be the big rich mogul and all this crap that Hollywood has got you induced in. You're never going to be that because these liberals are taking the opportunity of capitalism away. And they're trying to instill something that Europe has already been through and has already uh, been proven a failure. I mean, look, I guarantee that the European Union will fall. And the only reason it won't fall is because the American government is going to continue to bail out these damn European countries, and we shouldn't. Like I said, $7 billion via uh, the taxpayer is going to Greece to bail these stupid loser. Uh, losers out. They're, they're socialistic losers, and I don't think that we should give them a dime. I think they're pieces of garbage. All right, if you're going to live under a socialistic, communistic way of uh, of mode of production, an idea, a social mode of order that is any way collective, I don't think that you should be getting a dime from a free society or what used to be a free society here in America. And let me tell you, you know, Portugal is on the way of bankruptcy. Spain is on the way of bankruptcy. Italy is on the way of bankruptcy. Folks, you're going to see a lot of these European countries fall to the same demise or in the same situation as Greece, folks. Mark my word. All right, mark my word. And let me tell you, you know, just to let you know what kind of problems Greece is having, all right, they've got, you know, a similar situation that's going to happen here in America. They've got a bunch of old windbags and a bunch of old bureaucrats and a bunch of old people that are out here draining the socialistic system because, you know, these gas bags are living to be 80 or 90 years old. And there's not enough people working. There's not enough people working. And lo and behold, uh, this is why old Europe and the European Union is having serious problems with its own financial bookkeeping. That's why it's going bankrupt. That's why they're insolvent. And that's exactly the same fate that's going to happen to America if we don't pull our heads out of our clogged up colon pipes and start realizing that this is not a game. All right? This is not a game. This is as serious as a heart attack, and you idiots need to take it serious. 646-652-4869. And sh shoot me some tweets. All right, ghost politics is the name to tweet. All right, I know it sounds fruitier than a box of Fruit Loops, but that's what they call it, and that's what you stupid kids listen to, and that's the only thing they care about. 740, you're on the air. Hey, what's up, Ghost? It's Tony in Ohio, man. All right, man, what's going on, Tony? How's it going? Not much, man. I haven't talked to you in a long time. I wanted to uh, call in and ask you uh, if you remembered when I prognosticated uh, a long time ago about the... Uh, health care bill with Scott Brown when he first got elected everybody thought that that was going to stop the health care bill and I, t I told you on either your show or my show that uh, they were going to they were going to go ahead and pass it anyway and I knew that he, him being uh, uh, opposed to it wasn't going to matter because some of the previous statements he had ma made in favor of Medicaid Medicare and I figured that they were just going to pass down some watered down bill that wasn't going to do anything to control costs and at the same time mandate care on every individual and there that's exactly what happened yeah, well, you know, I'm sure you said it. I mean, I know I right when that idiot was elected, I wrote a blog with that uh, ridiculous uh, nude centerfold piece that he did for whatever Vanity Fair, whatever magazine it was, and I and I stated that all these morons like Mark Levin and uh, Savage and Beck, which rip off content from my program, and you can tell them I said that, they went out there and said, "Yeah, we're taking our country back." We're out there taking our country back. And, and, and lo and behold, you know, Scott Brown, what was he? A damn bedwetting liberal that's siding with all the liberal legislation that's being put forth. And why? 
Well, I would like to take a good look at his campaign contribution account, but that's just me. Yeah, I hear you, man. It's it's all about where the money's at, and you you follow the money, you'll see where where they lie. Because I mean, he's like you said, I'm you know you you see where his money's coming from, and you'll see there there are some organizations in there and some groups that we're not going to like as conservative people. But you know, some conservatives will turn a blind eye to it as they have for a long time. Because you know, it, it, I was having a discussion earlier in a different chat room with a guy. Uh, he's you know uh, around Blog Talk Radio a lot. I won't say his name. We were talk- I was trying to explain to him what classical liberalism was and how it has nothing to do with liberalism today, you know, because that was about uh, limited government. And, you know, uh, Adam Smith was a classical liberal. He invented basically, for, you know, for all intents and purposes, the modern idea of capitalism and free markets. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So- so it's like, you know, to think of uh, liberalism in a blanket term like that, it's, it, before the 20th century, it was totally different. It, it totally changed, you know what I mean? And, and now what you have are just people that want to mandate everything on everybody. They want, they want everybody to do the same thing everywhere. They don't have any respect for states' rights. They don't have any respect for individual rights. Absolutely not. Not only do they have no respect for our uh, political uh, rights and, and uh, unalienable rights, but they're trying to take away our right to get in what we put in. They're trying to take away the capitalist system, and I think it's disgusting that they're allowed to do this. Were you uh, listening in on my commentary about the financial reform bill? Yeah, with Dodd. Yeah, I mean, it's just disgusting that they're going to actually have, or the FDIC and the Secretary of Treasury are going to have supreme authority superseding congressional and judicial courts to take over any company that is deemed you know, too risky – or on the brink of default, or what, what they determine as being on the brink of default. Uh, and if you know legislation, and when it's written and it's crafted, it's supposed to be crafted to the most blatant and obvious language possible. I mean, they, you know, and whenever they put something vague, whenever they put vague terminologies when relating to something of bureaucratic power, it was put there intentionally so that they can expand their bureaucratic power, which was never intended to be used, but because of the vague terminology, they can go ahead and use that and abuse that, and that's exactly what, in my view, is going to happen here with this financial reform bill. It's the end of capitalism. Yeah, if you give the, the government power or, or any, you know, even, like when I say government, I say it loosely because you said they're passing the congressional authority over to an, another body, which is not constitutional or correct at all, and it's dangerous because if you, you can uh, pass any authority over to the government, government, whether it's going to be to euthanize big companies that are, are too big to fail and they need to be broke down or to bail them out, take them over, what have you, you're getting in a sticky situation where the government's choosing who's going to survive and who's not going to survive, and that's not a free market. That's mercantilism. That's on your path to destroying capitalism. You know what I mean? Absolutely, and I've drawn my line in the sand. It's either capitalism or death for me. I'm not going to sit here and watch some Frederick Engels, uh, you know, socialistic dream happen right before my very eyes here. You know, this is not what Marx was even intended for all these Marx fans that are getting a hard-on uh, about modern-day uh, politics. This is not even what Marx entailed. This is a Frederick Engels socialistic society uh, relating a lot to uh, Engels' later works. I mean, you know, once Marx died, I mean, this is exactly the, the framework in which Engels wanted as the perfect society. I don't know yeah. if you're familiar with Engels there. Uh... Yeah, Marx and Engels, they, they uh, worked together on uh, the Communist Manifesto, I do believe, yeah. correct? Yeah. yeah, and then he went on to write other stuff after... Uh... Marx's death, but yeah, I mean, I agree with you. It it, it falls a lot of in the lines of of what both of them wanted, especially what Engels wanted. I, I think Engels was was more the uh, the ethical guy. He was coming up with ideas based on what what he thought was right or wrong, as opposed to pure economic principle. Like I think uh, Marx's uh, uh, analysis of economics was a little more technical. You know what I mean? The, the dialectics and all that stuff that uh, Marx went through, I think, was, was a, a, a bit more understanding of, of the way uh, economies worked, although he didn't have it right either, as we both agree. But uh, I don't know, man. It, it, uh, I mean, I, let, me, let me explain why I believe Marx didn't have it right, was because he was at the very beginning, before the Industrial Revolution. So what he foresaw was potentially what is happening in America today. Uh, which is a bunch of you know non-cultural based uh, you know mindless idiots that do that know how to do nothing else but to become uh, you know the idiot that p- pins the tail on the back of a Pokemon in some assembly line somewhere, 
and they have absolutely, absolutely no craftsmanship, no, uh, uh, no type of idea or, or, or integrity when it comes to work. Now, that I'll give him. But then again, we have to also uh, agree that this was socially engineered once again. Right. Uh, and, and what I mean by socially engineered, we have to take the entitlement system into account, how you know it's socially engineered our families into becoming single-parent families, and women using children as a financial gain through entitlements. We also have to take into consideration the television and Hollywood's influence on our uh, social interaction and our ideas of what our dreams should be. We also have to take into consideration the educational uh, system who never taught the American people how to participate in the capitalist system properly. I mean, it used to, but then once the liberals started burning their bras and started going out there in the 60s and started reading Mao Zedong and uh, getting down with Che Guevara and all this other crap, (laughs) once all this happened, you got these people who... They they infiltrated first the educational system, then they infiltrated every other bureaucratic system of government, and that's why we have these ideologues actually uh, taking the audacity to transition what we knew of as a constitutional republic into some sort of uh, whatever, Frederick Engels corporate socialist hybrid. Yeah, most people don't, aren't aware of any of this stuff because, like, I'll, I'll go around the different shows on BTR. J- just as an example, use BTR. I mean, you can do it anywhere, and you'll you'll find that people that have signs up or, or are sl- using slogans like Restore the Republic, they don't even know what the Republic used to do, how it functioned. They don't understand the difference between what's a state's rights and what isn't. They think whatever they don't like at being a, a federal policy is a state's right, and they think anything they do like being a federal policy for everybody is not a state's right. That's not how it works. You're absolutely right, Tony, and I'm sure you're talking about maybe some of these tea baggers and these coffee party sure. people yeah. or whatever whatever you want to call them you know these individuals are starting to get political but the only reason they're getting political is because they they can't live their little uh you know dream that was fed to them by Hollywood because well you know they spent more than they were supposed to or you know they lost their job whatever that's what's getting them political the problem also is is they don't know why they're getting political they don't know why this is happening they don't know what to do what to protest for what to protest against and this is where idiots like uh, you know, Sarah Palin and, and you know all these people that are corporately funded by the same goons that are funding this ridiculous liberal regime, they're sitting here orchestrating both sides of the political spectrum here for right. us to actually be promoting the same damn thing. You see, you got teabaggers over here saying, "Oh, we we want low taxes, a tax revolt, and we we want uh, you know less entitlements, and they want to get rid of welfare, and they want to get rid of all this, uh, you know, for the supposed poor in America." But once you start talking about taking away Medicaid, Medicare, Social Security, and things that are going to hit the demographic that is more prone to the mm-hmm. Tea Party movement, they don't want to have nothing to do with you. I mean, I have lost uh, countless people that have listened to my show that were supposed to be conservatives that, you know, completely shunned me away because I said that we need to get rid of Social Security out of a moral principle because it wasn't fair for the young people, which have no economic opportunity today other than becoming a damn entitlement welfare moocher or going out and flipping burgers for about eight fifty an hour. It is not fair for this limited amount of economic opportunity for young people and for them to be forced to be taxed to this damn Social Security that they're never going to see in their life just because these old people decided that they were just going to use, uh, you know, I don't know, Social Security as their payment to their Cadillac or something. It's sick. It's disgusting. And I, I say that if you're a teabagger that's claiming all this tax revolt and, uh, you know, anti-tax and I'm a tea party teabagger, you should be against every single entitlement with the exception of the veterans' benefits because at the very minimum, they did a job, and they should be paid for a job. That's the capitalist way. That's the capitalist system, and that's all there is to it. Yeah, I can agree with that. And like you said, they're just waking up. Like, like I always say, people don't wake up unless it comes to their doorstep. Like their neighbor loses their job, they don't care. The guy across the street loses their job, they don't care. They just they keep going, yeah, he's a bum, he's a bum. You know what I mean? And then, yeah. they lose their, and then they lose their job and go, wait a minute, why is the whole capitalist system being destroyed? Now you realize. And, and when they're waking up to this, people like you and me get aggravated because they're just waking up and they're ignorant and they're, they're uneducated and they don't know anything about what, what they're mad about. They're just raging blindly at darkness with 
without any clue at a, as, a tar, as to what the target is. Me and you, we kind of know what the target is. At least we have a better idea than most. And, and it's aggravating, I think, for you. I know it is for me to, to, to constantly go through the same debates over and over. The same retorts to your you know, uh, arguments will get brought up, and you'll have to face down the same retort again. And it's like, yeah, how many times do you have to repeat it? it? You, know, it you, you can't repeat yourself but so many times before it makes you angry. Uh, I hear you, Tony. Hey, uh, do you mind staying on hold for a little bit? I'm going to take a few more callers and uh, talk a little bit more about some stuff. But uh, uh, people are listening. Listen from the, uh, from the uh, you know, radio on the Internet side. Go ahead and do your show. You know I love your show, and keep up the good work, man. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you calling in. And uh, once again, you're a breath of fresh air out here, Tony. Let me tell you, we need more people like you. Hopefully, uh, within your local community, you found some people to organize with. And uh, hopefully, if uh, a time, uh, you know, if the time comes, you'll be ready to go out there and do what's necessary. Yeah, I hear you, man. Just keep up the good work. You're an inspiration to a lot of people out there, even if uh, they, they think you might go a little far, you know. But I, I, I just think it's great because it's an outlet for people like me who are a little calmer. We, we need somebody angry on the air sometimes because we have this anger, too. We just don't know how to, you know, use it as an outlet. And you, you have a pretty uh, good place to do it. You're not hurting anybody. You know, you're, you're benefiting, I think, people. So. Good job. Yeah, I, I hope so. Anyway, man, thank you very much for calling once again, bro. Thanks. You too, man. All right, man. Well, thank you very much. And uh, that was Tony from Ohio, uh, uh, avid listener, uh, a very good contributor to the program to some of the commentary. Anyway, folks, if you're listening in, you're listening to the second hour of the True Conservative Radio program. I am your host, the man they call Ghost. Once again, we are not having a chat room because... Well, folks, I mean, I don't want anybody who is listening to my program that uh, appreciates my commentary, that believes in the substance of the commentary being provided on this program. I don't want their security jeopardized. I don't want their I identity uh, jeopardized. Uh, I don't want them to be harassed. I don't want them to, you know, any federal agents to gather any information, nothing of that nature. And, of course, if you folks listen to episode number 171, folks, uh, it's a very scary situation. I'm starting to see uh, individuals uh, definitely follow yours truly, folks. I mean, you know, maybe I'm getting paranoid, maybe I'm not. But to be completely honest with you, folks, everything that I convey on this broadcast is a fact, and you can look it up for yourself. Like I said, you can look it up for yourself if you don't if you don't believe me. We're gonna take a few more callers here. Uh, Nine five four. You've been wanting to get on the air. What's going on? Hey, thanks for taking my call. I guess you saw the tweet, the, my tweet there. I just wanted to comment on, I, I mean, historically, greed begets greed. It, it's never enough. I mean, it's human nature. So my historically, capitalism has, has in of itself destroyed capitalism. And then how do you, how do you say that just because of, uh, well, I mean, you know, explain yourself. Well, when you were talking about how these kids today, and I certainly agree with you, a lot of them feel they're going to grow up to be rap stars or whatever because that's what Hollywood has put out there and, and whatever, and, and kids dream, and, and that's fine. But <clears throat> excuse me. But in, in a way, you you know, taking that away, you you have well, we have an oligarchy. We live in an oligarchy. Um, and, and nepotism and cronyism is the way it works. It's not about as much as what you know. It's about who you know. And on, on top of that, it, it's just you have large corporations gobbling up. Look at Home Depot, for example. Say you wanted to – I like capitalism. I'm going to open a hardware store. I can't do that anymore because Lowe's, Home Depot, and the big giants have taken over. So oh, that's okay. what I mean by capitalism destroying itself. All right. Well, let's take your argument. Okay, yeah, the corporations, they're big, they're gobbling up every small business, or they're lowering the cost of uh, products below wholesale value to take out other uh, small competitors. Okay, yeah, it's a bad thing, but let's take a look at who's responsible for that. The, the people that are responsible for that are the same people pissing and moaning about the corporations. Instead of going out and you know paying the extra couple of dollars to support small business, to support uh, you know people within your community, they don't do that. They don't do that for whatever reason, whether it's because, oh, you know, he's rich or she's rich and I'm not, so I'm not going to support that small business. I'm going to go out and, you know, what, uh, get the cheaper product that was made by some 12-year-old in China for 15 cents an hour. It's the American consumer's fault. And that's why I have to say that, uh, 
you know, individuals like myself, and there are, are other individuals out there who understand the game of capitalism. The, the way we spend our money is a political statement. And if individuals are going to piss and moan about, oh, the corporations, they're gobbling up this, they're paying us less, they're not giving us health care, they're not doing this, well, then don't spend your money there and make a calculated, organized effort to make sure that nobody else does. And try to make it as blatant as possible that if anybody spends their money at this uh, particular corporation, uh, they're donating to you know uh, slavery in China and you know and, and those things. But you you don't hear that, sir. And the reason you don't hear that is because the American public, you know, let's be frank, they're they're idiots. Well, you're, well, you're exactly you're exactly right. I mean, some of us do support the local business and do pay the extra, but. I guess it's just not enough of us doing it. And I want to touch on what the other thing you said about the. Uh, oh, well, let me. Well, before you get on that, let ahead. me elaborate real quick. Okay, let's take it a step further. A lot, not a lot of people do that. Why don't people do that? Well, because we have an educational system that has been infiltrated by leftist ideologues, and they're the ones writing the textbooks. They're the ones writing the tests. And if you take a look at your child, uh, you know, work, I mean, it's pretty much substandard spit-back garbage. And to be completely honest with you, they never tell you these things. They never tell you how to balance your checkbook. They don't tell you how not to get so much credit. They don't tell you how to play the game of capitalism. And why didn't they tell you? They used to tell you. They used to tell you before 1965, I'll tell you that right now, they used to tell you. They don't tell you anymore because this damn bureaucratic system of education had been influenced and infiltrated since the late 60s and has been educating every single child to be nothing more than some mindless, idiotic uh, buffoonery that does nothing but be a voke in the capitalist system and they, in turn, create their culture with this Hollywood-induced television alternate reality perception. So, in essence, uh, 954, it's not uh, capitalists' fault for the destruction of capitalism. This was a, an engineered process. Capitalism would have been perfectly fine had people been educated properly. We have to be a sophisticated society, a very sophisticated society for capitalism to work. And we were that society. If you look at college graduates, you know, little term papers now, they look like fifth grade education in 1830 or 35 or 1840. I mean, why don't you read some of the Civil War veterans that were 19, uh, you know, 20 years old, the eloquency, the, uh, the vernacular that they used. I mean, you compare that to these college graduates that are doing nothing but put themselves in debt before they even get into the capitalist game just so they can party and have sexual intercourse and become sexual deviates. And then when they come out and realize that there was no jobs to begin with, they want to turn to the same, uh, you know, leftist idea that's been pumped down our throats, sir. It's not capitalism. What you're seeing here is not capitalism. It is a socially engineered corporate process. These assholes in Wall Street are not capitalists. They're socialists. And let me tell you, Wall Street should be destroyed, and so should Hollywood. Go, well, go ahead. Quite a, statement. <laughs> quite a statement there goes. wouldn't expect anything less from you. Uh, but before I touch Washington and, and, and uh, 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 Wall Street, and uh, education. I, I want to ma mention about uh, voting I, I, or, or, or spending your dollar. Uh, I would sooner respect somebody that says, you know, I never vote, but I, but I know where every dollar I spend goes. Because ultimately, when you divide campaign contributions by number of votes, you get a price per vote. And if you can direct your dollar away from that, uh, uh, the campaign finance, uh, issue and I, I think, and quite frankly, goes. I think before anything can get done, the number one thing before anything is campaign finance reform. You got to get uh, the the money uh, out of out of Washington. You got to get the corporations to stop writing the laws for their benefit. And and for that matter, just to touch on the education, as you go in, in, into the books and, and the corporate, you know, it's a lot of this is again, it's corporations. You know, it's again who who writes these these textbooks? Um, it's these larger publishing companies. You know, it's still they have a vested interest, and and then so, I think I know where I'm going with this. The, I, I hear what you're saying, but but also with all due respect, 
who it is a corporate influence in our education system. And, and I think it's ultimately corporations getting whatever they want because follow the money. If you follow the money, you will always find your puppet master. And in this case, who has all the money? Corporate sponsors and lobbyists and contributions. Well, I, I, I can agree to a certain extent. I agree that the puppeteers of Washington are corporate interests, are individuals with money. But in essence, uh, you know, it takes money to be a, a statesman. It takes money to go out and campaign. It takes money to go out and advertise. Now, I agree that, you know, obviously this abnormal amount of campaign contributions that's given to each and every one of these scumbag politicians in Washington is obnoxious, and that's exactly what's guiding the light of all legislation that's passed in Washington. But once again, what we should do, instead of campaign finance reform, we should be calling term limits. I mean, you know, these bastards can be career politicians. We shouldn't – I mean, if, if we're going to let people be career politicians, we should have strict term limits so that if they want to be a career politician – They'll have to you know, do small terms in each and every bureaucratic position that's out there to be elected. Now, I'm talking about you know, you, you've got unlimited terms for con Congress, you know, they would, unlimited two-year ter uh, two terms. Uh, I mean, I, I think that we need just two terms of two-year terms and one term of a six-year term in the Senate. And once we start you know, uh, making non-career bureaucrats, and it, it'll actually entice people, in my view – from uh, you know the good part of public service to go out and actually do something for this country because even if they do have a financial interest in getting a short-term political uh, seat of power, the people are going to be able to see right through it because you know they're going to they're going to know right off the bat they're not going to have time to be able to put things in amendments they're not going to have the time to be able to wheel and deal they're not going to be able to have the time to establish long-term financial relationships with these uh, you know corporate entities and i think in my view if we you know establish strict term limits on our politicians on all levels local state and federal i think that we'll start seeing a different political america yeah, I agree. I, I think that would be a, a good. Uh, it would be a good thing to try. Um, but I still. But money is is always going to be the root of all evil. And um, well, well there there's nothing. There's perspective. nothing evil about money, sir. There's nothing evil about money. What, what's well, evil? It's, it's greed. It's what what causes the greed begets greed. When is it enough? I mean, it's never well, you enough. Know, the thing is, but but I, I understand. I understand what you're saying. But you're blaming capitalism for this illegal activity that's happened on Wall Street. These individuals were in bed with the government. They got bailed out with our tax dollars by our politicians. Uh, you know, the, the, this is corporate socialism. This has nothing to do with capitalism. Uh, you know, this is highway robbery. This is what this is. I mean, in my opinion, I think that every politician that's in office today should be unelected, and once they're a private citizen, they should be uh, brought in, uh, you know, for charges of treason, for selling out the country, you know, uh, for sitting here and trying to rob us of our capitalist system. I mean, that, that's my personal opinion. Same with everybody in Wall Street. I think every idiot in Wall Street today that capitalized off of our tax dollars should be thrown in prison for treason. And you see, uh, you know, nobody's talking about this. Everybody just wants to demonize, the, you know, capitalism as if it was capitalism's fault. This was not capitalism. All right? I mean, you know, to be honest with you, what happened here was an engineered process. I mean, look, I understand what you're saying about greed. Greed motivates. Greed makes people break the law. Greed makes people do this and that. But that's why we have a rule of law. That's why we're supposed to have competent officials and public servants in that rule of law to uh, enforce uh, the rules of the game. And if people aren't enforcing the rules of the game because they're being paid off by corporate interest and, you know, the American public doesn't give a rat's ass, well, this is the consequence of those actions right here. I mean, we've got a complacent – go ahead. Well, rule of law is regulation, correct? No, rule of law is not regulation. Rule of law is the idea – that the only way that we are going to have private property, the only way private property will be respected is if there's a certain rule of law that everyone in, the, in, in whatever country or whatever vicinity that is deemed uh, uh, capitalist or pro-free market or, or, or pro-private property, everybody has to abide by that rule of law. And people that don't abide by that rule of law, there won't be any private property. The only people that will have the property are those that have more barbarians on their side willing to pillage and, and become berserkers, if you want my opinion.
Well, uh, that's that's fine. Now, I, well, one thing is, it's kind of on, on topic, but I mean, I, I love hearing you, dude. You're you're really smart, <laughs> and, and I appreciate what what you what you're doing out here. I mean, this is GOP hypo- is hypocrisy is my screen name, and I I've given you crap before, but we disagree on some things. But I think we we see each other on the same level in a lot of ways as well. But I wanted to um, be going back to the greed. If ninety, I think ninety percent of the wealth is controlled by five percent of the people. Is that correct? Well, I mean that's the statistic, sure. Okay, and and, and with that being said, I mean it's kind of hard to get ahead when you're you're fighting that monster and they have all the purse strings. But one thing I want to touch on is if they're paying, if if that statistic is correct, that that five percent of the people are paying uh, control ninety percent of the wealth. With, with all due respect, is shouldn't five percent of the people pay ninety percent of the taxes? Well, first of all, I, you know, and I want to thank you for calling nine five four. But in my personal opinion, I think that the reason the top five percent have most of the wealth is because the people are not as in tuned with what you're in tuned into. People don't care that the top five percent, and if they do care, it's because people like you state that statistic nine five four. Uh, you know, if people really cared about who had the wealth and who was the richest, they wouldn't be spending their money in that direction. You know, they would be making other private individuals rich. You know, they'd be making other people wealthy. You know, they'd be making small business owners that serve the community in a philanthropic fashion. You know, they, they'd be out here supporting their small businesses that support families, that support schools. You know, and I'm not talking about uh, I'm talking about private institutions. So, in, in essence, if we want five percent of the people to be be in the poor, the top five percent to be in the poorhouse, well, what we should be doing is demanding. First of all, we need to be demanding economic opportunity. All right, and if we don't demand economic opportunity, this is exactly what you're seeing. Once we demand economic opportunity and get it, we don't need to be spendaholics and consumeristic gluttons that are spending next week's cash. What we need to do is save capital like it used to be, like when my parents grew up. You know, you save capital so that you can purchase more products. You know, don't go out there spending next week's cash expecting to keep the crap that you bought on credit. It just doesn't it doesn't make any sense. So, you know, in 954, I understand what you're saying, you know, you're feeling sorry for people, you know, the top 5%, you know, are bad guys. And don't get me wrong, I think some of the top 5% are really bad individuals. And I'm not going to name their names, but there's some in the top 5% that are actually down with this corporate socialistic crap. And those people should be thrown in prison, too, if you want my opinion. But not all the top 5% of that. A lot of the top 5% believe in the idea of capitalism. They believe that the only thing that makes or creates things is capitalism. Capitalism brought us modernity. It brought us technology. It brought us into the modern age, capitalism. It inspires the greatest in men. When was the last thing that was made out of a collective society that you gave two rats asses about? Except for those, uh, you know, assembly line morons in China that are out there being enslaved under the guise of uh, communism to make a bunch of billionaire communist bureaucrats rich. Anyway, folks, I'm going to take one more call here. Then we're going to move on to a couple other subject matters here in the program. I want to thank everybody for their call, by the way, that are uh, actually providing substance here. Uh, 336, area code, you're on the air. Hello, this is Brian. Yeah, all right. You sound too fruity to be on this program, all right? Get off! 347, you're on the air. Um, go, thank you. Uh, shut your mouth, all right? Give me a break. I mean, what, what is this crap? What is this crap? This is what I'm saying, folks. Here we are, we're having serious discussions about, you know, people's lives about our lives, about the American people. And you see, this is what you get. You get a bunch of fruity-ass bastards, you know, shoving gerbils up their shit funnels, you know, acting like some, uh, you know, fruity-ass in heat at a, at a glory hole somewhere, you know, trying to get their rocks off, uh, you know, doing some prank call to the True Conservative Radio program. It's disgusting. 
So I'm going to go ahead and move on. Let's talk about another subject matter that I found rather funny. I'm talking about these idiots out there from South Park. You know, the creators of South Park, you know, these morons that like to make fun of everybody, everything, you know. They like to disrespect everybody's uh, political perspective. They like to disrespect everybody's religion. They like to disrespect this. They like to disrespect that. Well, they stepped on somebody's toes that, you know, they obviously didn't want to have anything to do with. And that's, of course, is the uh, Mujahideen fighters, uh, you know, in the Islamic fanatical movement. Now, I found it rather funny that both of these fruity-ass little leftist uh, South Park morons got cold feet once these uh, Islamic fanatics started yelling Allah Akbar because of uh, them uh, showing the Prophet Muhammad. Now, let me tell you, I, I know I make fun of uh, those uh, in the Middle East, and let me tell you, I, I don't do that out of racial uh, hatred. I'm, I just do that to be humorous. And as a matter of fact, I know a lot of people within the Middle Eastern community that's against a lot of the factions that are ruling their country of origin. One in particular is the uh, resistance within Iran that is uh, anti-Iranian revolution. You know, you can call them the Iran Contra, for a lack of a better term. Uh, but in essence, uh, I know these individuals, and, and, and you know, these people are they're, 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 they believe in Islam. All right, they believe in Muhammad. They believe in uh, you know whatever religious uh, moral perspective that they believe in, but they also believe in capitalism. They also believe in the free market. All right, I mean, l let me explain something to you people. Uh, you know, the the whole reason why the crux of these mujahideen Islamic fanatics are out here committing all these old you know atrocities, suicide bombings, and all this other nonsense, in essence, is what. Uh, is what that CIA Michael Schur said. They basically want an Islamic state that is a true Islamic state that is governed by the Koran and is not some misinterpretation of the Koran like they're pre presenting in Iran. You know, the Iranian Revolution was intended to establish an Islamic country that fit this category. But Everyone who, especially within the Islamic community, knows that that didn't happen in Iran. It's a complete contradiction. Uh, you know, these asshole uh, ayatollahs are living like, you know, filthy rich sultans or something, which is in complete contradiction to their pious image. So this is why you have resistance within Iran. Uh, and I know that, you know, sometimes, you know, we, we you know, make some references to, you know, certain racial makeups and whatever. But I know better than anybody, you know, to show a damn picture of the Prophet Muhammad. As a matter of fact, um, that's one good way of, you know, getting yourself a nice good car bomb to your, you know, car or something. I mean, I mean it's just stupid. But the reason that I'm bringing this up, folks, is because South Park... You know, the, the idiots that like to, you know, put Jesus in all kinds of precarious situations, sexually suggestive situations. Uh, you know, the, the, the same creators of South Park that like to put, uh, you know, uh, the Hindu God and Buddha and, and, and disrespect every religion and, and, and blaspheme every religion out there that practices any kind of dogma. But... When it comes to the Prophet Muhammad and messing with the Mujahideen fighters in uh, the Islamic fanatical movement, all of a sudden they caved in like a bunch of punks. Now, what, is it, what exactly does that say about leftism? Huh? I'll tell you what that says. If you push hard enough and you tell these stupid leftists that you're not messing around, they're going to back down, folks. That's exactly what that means. And let me tell you, I, I, it won't be any skin off my ass if the South Park creators end up reaping what they sow by, you know, uh, acting like they were, you know, oh, look, at we, we're untouchable uh, pansy asses that are going to make fun of every dogma out there and expect no type of negative recourse 
Oh yeah, but we're still gonna we're we're still gonna live the Hollywood lifestyle. We're you know we're South Park creators. We're gonna make movies like Orgasmo that defames uh, you know the latter Latter Day Saints tradition and defames uh, morality that promotes pornography. I mean, they thought that they can get away with all this crap without any kind of negative reaction, and and then when they finally get a negative reaction. Uh, you know, and for you folks that aren't aware with what happened to the South Park uh, idiots, well, you know, they were about to air some sort of, uh, you know, animated picture of the Prophet Muhammad. And uh, right before it aired, uh, you had some Islamic fanatic re- website uh, claiming that, uh, you know, these two creators of South Park should be targets uh, by the Mujahideen for being uh, blasphemers. And... Um, you know, um, of course, the South Park creators, I mean, obviously shook in their little uh, crustated nutsack, and you know, they were like, oh, my God, I don't know what to do. I, uh, uh. So what they ended up doing because uh, of the call on their head by the Islamic community, they decided to censor themselves for the first time. That's right. They decided to censor out the whole Prophet Muhammad picture so that, you know, the you know the Islamic fanatics could call off the call for their head you know I mean it is just disgusting and if anybody knows those two South Park bastards uh, you tell them that I think they're the biggest bunch of punks on the face of the planet all right you tell them that I think they're pussies all right they're flakes you can sit here and make fun of everybody else's religion right you can make fun of everybody Buddha and you know Krishna and the Hindus and you can make fun of People's morality, you can, you know, uh, uh, subject young people to sexually perverted ideas and uh, bestiality, all this crap. But when it comes to somebody showing a little bit of spine to you spineless bastards, all of a sudden you're going to cave in. I thought you had a little bit of balls there, South Park creators, you stupid, silly bastards. Huh? What happened? Shaking your boots over there, for heaven's sake. Huh? You're, a little scared. You're scared crapless. I want to hear from you, 646-652-4869. What do you think about this crap? 781, you're on the air. Hey, how's it going? My name's Lance. Who? Lance. Lance? Oh, what's going on? Nothing. Well, I heard you talk about South Park and uh, this whole Muhammad thing, uh, and I personally just think that the only person that should have the right to draw him is Bill Wagner. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, and you, you know what? Uh, you know, where, where's Bill Wagner going besides, you know, broadcasting in his basement saying, yeah, I'm running for senator. Great. 212, you're on the air. Yeah, what up, goes This is Tyrone. Yeah, well, there's Tyrone, Tyrone again, for heaven's sake. Why you got to be hating Obama, son? Why you got to be hating on Obama, Holmes? What's up? What's up, yeah. up? Jesus Christ. Get him off! You see what I'm saying? I wouldn't be surprised if these idiots were told, being told to call by the damn South Park fruity asses themselves, you know? I bet you those South Park idiots are, you know, sitting on a G.I. Joe with a condom on it, listening to this broadcast, saying, Yay! Eight five zero, you're on the air. Seth is a nigger. Yeah, oh, Jesus Christ, get him off! Sick and tired of this crap. Three three seven, you're on the air. Uh, hey, Ghost, honor to speak with you, sir. Uh, I think you're you're absolutely right, you know, and it it also proves that basically how full of crap the left is because. If they really thought Christians are the way they portray them, they wouldn't say any of the stuff they do about Christians. They know they can get away with insulting Christians because they really are good, decent people, and we're not going to go crazy and kill them. But when they actually insult someone that will, you know, stick it in their teeth, suddenly they're just a bunch of vaginas. Uh, Well, you know, for a lack of a better term, you're absolutely right. And let me tell you, you know, I think it's uh, gutless for these damn South Park nutty asses uh, you know, to sit here and back off with their little, you know, portrayal or their their animation of the Prophet Muhammad. You know, I mean, I don't understand 
you know, I, I thought you guys out there in South Park were down for whatever. I thought y'all were, uh, you, know, you didn't care about the recourse or any of the backlash of your controversial cartoon. Anyway, I think that everybody should take note about the response that South Park did because, uh, you know, they were too chicken shit to go out and, you know, do what they said or intended that they were going to do. That should show all of you how gutless leftists really are. And the only reason that they're getting away with the things that they're getting away with is because nobody is even, even offering any kind of legitimate opposition. These leftists are gutless. And let me tell you there, South Park creators, I, I hope nothing but the worst for you idiots. All right? should have known better. You can't be going out here, uh, you know, disrespecting people's uh, dogmas and religions out here. All right? I mean, if you want to have a serious discussion about religion, if you disagree with religion, well, that's why you should go out and actually have a debate about it, you ass clown. But, no, you want to make a big mockery of it. You want to, you know, uh, make a big mockery of it and, you know, have, uh, you know, religious figures and sexually suggestive positions and say, oh, that's, that's freedom of speech. Well, yeah, of course it's freedom of speech. But remember, you know, your speech is going to affect other people. And as a result, you've got to expect a certain, uh, a certain negative and positive reactions to whatever it is that you, per, you know, you amplify out there. And that's exactly what happened to these idiots from South Park. And uh, I just think they're gutless. I think they should have, you know, they should have uh, aired the Prophet Muhammad, and uh, you know, it would have showed that, hey, you know, look at us, we're leftist. Uh, we're going to shove this immoral crap down your throat, and you're going to like it. But they didn't do it. They're gutless. So uh, South Park, uh, you get the weenie of the month uh, label on the ghost show here. Uh, the weenie of the month. Weenies of the month. That's what you get. And uh, let me go ahead and talk about something else, because I really don't give a crap about these South Park losers. I mean, you know, we, we already know they're gutless. But I want to talk about this Gulf Coast oil spill. Now, folks, uh, I remember the Republican convention in the 2008 presidential elections when they brought out that stupid four-eyed Eskimo bimbo and her pregnant teen, pre-teenage daughter, whatever the hell it is. Uh, they brought her out and, you know, introduced her to the stupid, nimrotic American public. Remember that stupid saying that the Republicans said during the 2008 election? Like a bunch of morons. Drill, baby, drill. Drill, baby, drill. I mean, you know, I mean, you give me a break. I mean, I, I was livid back then when they were saying it on this broadcast. Because I live by the coast. You will not live by it, but I, I live in Texas, which is along the Gulf Coast. I actually have property on on Padre Island, which is you know on the Gulf Coast. And I had stated back in 2008 when these idiots were chanting "drill baby drill" that these idiots didn't know their asses from their elbows. I mean, there's hundreds of these damn oil rigs all over the Gulf, hundreds of them. And like I stated in that broadcast, not only do we risk natural disaster which obviously happened with this BP oil spill, whatever it is, British Petroleum. They're trying to backtrack on you know, who was responsible for that, but who, who knows who cares. But I stated back then when these stupid Republicans were like, drill, baby, drill, when they were you know, basically being you know, soulless cash whores for the oil companies, I was the only one out here stating that that was the most stupidest thing to say. That on top of being an ecological disaster pending, which, you know, we have had some spills out here in the Gulf, nothing compares to what's happened here recently. But as a result of all the pumping of this oil and some of the oil being released in the water, we have artificially, and when I mean we, I'm talking about, you know, America, because we are consuming this oil. We are allowing people to drill off of our coast out here in the Gulf Coast. These individuals uh, actually have heightened the temperature of the Gulf Coast by like two, three, four degrees. And that in turn actually gives fuel to hurricanes. And that's why anytime you see a hurricane get or reach the Gulf Coast, they go from a Category 2 to a damn Category 5 within 24 hours. 
So for all you idiots out here that were, you know, jerking your chain off, uh, you know, happy about Obama announcing that he's going to offshore drill, and the only reason that he said he was going to announce, or the only reason he announced that he was going to offshore drill, was to get some of you uh, dumbass Republican idiots, you minions, you mindless imbeciles, to start looking at him in a better light. I mean, once Obama decided that he was going to do offshore drilling, I mean, everybody, well, not everybody on the right, but most idiots on the mindless minion-following Republican right creamed in their pantyhose because Obama decided that he was going to allow offshore drilling out here. And you know what? Uh, If it isn't an act of God, right when he announced that, a week later or a week and a half later, whatever the hell it was, we have this unfortunate ecological incident relating to offshore drilling. I'm serious. Now, if you really want to bring down the costs of oil and of cost of energy, we should be doing what I have stated time and time and time again on this broadcast. And I'm talking about forcing this pathetic Iraqi parliament that is out here governing the country of Iraq that we put in power, all right, out of our own blood, out of our own sweat, we liberated that country, the American people liberated that country, and the United States government should be forcing this Iraqi governing body to pay, to pay back their over trillion dollar of debt that the United States incurred liberating these people. And on top of which, we should be getting oil pro bono until the damn debt is paid off in full with interest, just like the Brits did uh, in World War II. I mean, as a matter of fact, the Brits barely paid off their tab that they owed the United States because we saved their ass in World War II uh, just recently. I think in this past decade, they just recently uh, they just recently finished paying it off. And you see, nobody's talking about this. Nobody's even brought this up. Nobody cares. Everybody, we just coughed that trillion dollars and, and, and coughed all those thousands of lives that were sacrificed in Iraq. We're just going to let that all go by the wayside, and we're going to go, hey, drill, baby, drill, and, and cause ecological disasters to our own food supply, which is what we did here with this Gulf offshore drilling incident that is spilling 500,000 gallons a day or whatever the hell it is. I mean, you know, if you're about down by the coast, and you know, you better just forget about eating seafood. You know, you, I mean, seriously, you, you better forget about eating seafood. And, and you know what? You know what? What's convenient about all this too? You know what else is convenient? That they're actually telling us that we're gonna, we better expect prices going higher on products that use the Mississippi River as some sort of shipping lane. Yeah. Yeah, so not only are we, uh, you know, deprived of food out of the Gulf that, you know, a lot of fishermen along the Gulf make their livelihoods on, not only, you know, nothing there going to be edible possibly for the next 10 years, uh, we're going to have the price of goods marked up because of this stupid, ridiculous disaster because they're going to close off the Mississippi River for, uh, you know, any kind of shipping uh, cargo. I mean, this is just utterly, this is utterly ridiculous. It's utterly stupid. It's sick. It's pathetic. Can't take it, man. Anyway, folks, uh, we got 22 minutes, a little less than 22 minutes left in the broadcast. And I want to put a call to everybody out there who is pro-capitalism. Everybody out there that's a conservative, a constitutionalist, we need to get our asses off of the sidelines and we need to get on the front lines, folks, because the front lines, like I've said, is right outside your goddamn doorstep. It's right outside. Now, folks, I know that we've got a lot of people out here claiming that, hey, we need to get militant, we need to get this, we need to get that. Let's be completely honest, okay? 
Let's look at the possible scenarios, given the sequence of events that the government has partaken in within the past couple of weeks. Let's look at the potential, the potential events that could incur because of all these possibilities. Let's say that Obama, because of the Debt Commission, and let me tell you, the Debt Commission is going to tell Obama that he's got to cut entitlements. He's going to have to cut them. And he said in that speech right before the Goldman Sachs little testimony, that everything was on the table except for veterans' benefits. So Obama is going to appoint this presidential debt commission so that he can blame the commission when he has to pull the rug from under all the entitlement-ridden pieces of garbage. And once these losers lose their entitlements, where are these people going to go? They're going to go to your house. You know, they're going to go to your house. They're going to pillage your family. They're going to pillage your goods. You know, that's what they're going to do, folks. And let me tell you, in my opinion, it is then and only then when we'll have to, un, you know, maybe redefine the strategies of being a nonviolent situation. But until then, I think that we still have a fighting chance through battling, through battles of conscience. We need to humiliate everybody who is collecting any kind of entitlement whatsoever. I mean, you know, there's a lot of barrel rollers out there, a lot of 4chan, a lot of e-bombs idiots that email me up all the time that say that they only, you know, kick it on those stupid websites for something to do. They don't really believe in their little stupid enemy, little jerk-off causes. But why don't you use your time and energy more effectively, all right? I mean, if you truly want to be a rebel, if you truly want to cause something that's going to put your name somewhere, that's going to put you in, in, in the stature of something important instead of un, some insignificant prank-calling loser, then why don't you go out there and why don't you spread the word about capitalism? I'm drawing the line right here. I'm drawing the line in the sand, and I'm saying to you, and I'm saying to everybody who believes in the same ideology, it's either capitalism or death. Because I refuse to live in this corporate socialist crap. I refuse to live in this communist crap. I refuse to do it. I refuse to sit here and, you know, treat single whore mothers with kid gloves because they happen to shit out six kids from six different fathers, and our government entitlement system gives them the opportunity to generate revenue for being a freaking baby factory. I refuse to do this. I refuse to sit here and watch individuals who are out there working their asses off, who collect no entitlements to continue to be taxed for these moochers of society that have benefited nothing, that have done nothing to benefit this country. Now, when I speak for those that are out there who understand the contradictions within this country, I speak for those tax-paying people in America. I speak for those individuals who don't collect entitlements. That's who I speak for. I'm sick of these individuals out here from the teabag party and the coffee party, you know, uh, you know uh, shoving large pieces of furniture up your shit funnel party. I'm sick of all these parties claiming, oh yeah, we don't want no more taxes. It's a tax revolt. It's a tax revolt. And these are the same assholes collecting Medicare and Social Security disability you know uh, how about no taxes how about that how about no more taxes because I don't want to fund this ridiculous garbage anymore how about understanding and I'm talking about each and every one of you individuals that like to spend your little money that like to swipe your little card and become a little consumeristic glutton why don't you stupid idiots understand that how you spend your money is a political statement, you asshole? How you spend your money is a political statement. And if you're going to sit here and piss and moan about the corporations, if you're going to piss and moan about how the corporations are not giving you paying jobs, they're not giving you health care, they're not giving you benefits, they're not giving you overtime, they're not giving you crap, then stop spending your money there, you stupid jagoffs. Stop spending your money. Where you spend your money is a political statement, you asshole. 
But none of you really give a crap about that. All you care about, as long as you get your little materialistic widget for the cheapest amount that is possible, you don't care. But you see, that's how hypocritical Americans are. That's why a lot of the people that you listen on my broadcast that call my show, that's why they have no integrity. That's why they have no personality. That's why they have no creativity, no originality. Because they are products of this ridiculous idea that the education system created. And that idea is to be nothing more than some mindless, spit-back, knowledge-having jerk-ass that is just some consumeristic, fat imbecile that turns perfectly good food into shit. And that's the way it is, folks. I mean, you know, this is the, the majority of America. And I'm asking for everyone out there. I mean, we need to take some serious measures, all right? We need to take some serious measures. I, I, you know, for all you taggers out there that like to tag your little stupid gang and your little, you know, stupid little tagging crew, whatever the hell you stupid idiots tag, why don't you tag something like death to the welfare state? Huh? Why don't you talk about, you know, why don't you tag something like capitalism or death? Why don't you tag something up like, uh, you know, a, a fuck single mothers? And, I, and for all you people that are out here saying, oh, my God, he said the F word, well, shove it up your ass. This is what we need to say. These are the things that need to be said. It is no time to be pussyfooting around with, oh, you can't curse, you can't do it. It's not time for that crap. We need it to be in the people's face. We need individuals to be inspired to print out propaganda and just start hanging it out everywhere, just start passing it out everywhere on people's cars, in front of corporations, in people's houses, and start putting on that propaganda the contradictions that I state on this program, the contradictions that are out there and that are apparent in this government, that are apparent in this corporate socialist system. We need you to go out there and humiliate the welfare state for what it is, because that's what it is, folks. There's no integrity in the welfare state. There's no type of self-worth. There's no type of uh, any kind of integrity whatsoever and this is why you have all these people that have no shame you know posting ridiculous uh, dumbass little videos about themselves making themselves look like complete and utter obnoxious jokes because their integrity is so low these people are below a pond scum I mean, you know, these people are lower than the leftover crustated secretions in an adult movie theater. That's how low these morons are. And, folks, I'm calling on everybody out there. I'm talking about the true American working person. I'm talking about the young in America. It's your time now, you assholes, all right? Stop doing a barrel roll, all right? Stop following a bunch of fruity asses on 4chan who are, you know, e-bombs, a bunch of fruity ass bastards that aren't doing anything but getting rich off you morons anyway. Why don't you go out and prove something? Why don't you go out there and do something? You know, I mean, you know, I, I know this uh, one Korean fella, and he's a citizen, you know, he's a legal citizen. And I have no problem with legal citizens that have come from other countries, as long as they went through the whole process. He's a business owner. He actually owns a small uh, little, I guess a fast food uh, little spot at one of the local supermarkets. You know how supermarkets have little cafes and little... Uh, you know, little, little, little restaurants that are, now I wouldn't say restaurants, but little fast food areas, they have little sitting areas, that sort of thing. Well, anyway, this Korean fellow actually owns like some sort of sushi uh, fast food little area there, one of these supermarkets. And he was telling me that he can't believe that America is just handing out all these entitlements, that America is just allowing illegal immigrants, and this is coming from an immigrant himself, but a legal one. He can't believe that all these illegal immigrants are just being embraced with open arms. He can't believe this crap, because wh why? He came from North Korea. He had to defect from North Korea, and he only wishes that all these Americans that are out here begging for more handouts from the government would be able to live under our true entitlement system that's going to end up being this system, and that's via North Korea. And I felt sorry for this man, and you know, he, he, he actually feels sorry for American people. Because let me tell you what, what happens in the Asian communities, according to this fellow that I talked to. 
What happens in the Asian communities is the Asian elderly that come in, and I shouldn't say elderly, but the elders, the Asian elders, once they come into the country, they actually work their asses off, and they save their money, all right? Like, you know, uh, ten of them live in a one-bedroom apartment, and they literally eat a bowl of rice a day for like three or four years so they can stack their money, so they can stack their chips and once these Asian, uh, you know, uh, these Asian elders uh, finally establish some sort of capital, that's when they and their family establish these small businesses and build from there. And by the time those elders become elderly, well, they actually have something to leave their children. You see, people are having children today so that the children can take care of them instead of them taking care of the children. And that's exactly what's backwards here in America, and I hope it hits you youths out there that have nothing to show for yourself, that have mothers and fathers, or if you're lucky to have both mother and father, but you have these individuals not worried about you, not worried about your well-being, your emotional state. They're not caring about anything but how to become some materialistic asshole by any means necessary, whether that's becoming a subliminal prostitute, whether that's that's uh, you know, uh, a mooching off of somebody's, somebody else, some significant other. It doesn't matter. But the youth of today is being neglected by their families. And the reason is, is because the family has been destroyed. And the only reason that children are being created today is so that they can take care of their parents tomorrow. Which it should be the other way around, just like it is in the Asian communities. All right? The Asian communities, all right, the elders build businesses and built net worth so that they can leave it to their children, so they can take care of their children. People today are shitting out children so their children can take care of them, and that's a bunch of horse crap. It's a bunch of horse crap. So that's why I'm saying to the youth of America today, you know, uh, you know second guess what you're – parents are telling you, all right? Second guess the the life your parents gave you. If you think that, hey, my mommy loves me because she left me alone with my computer and I ended up getting a, a stupid wannabe cyber digital friendship family with a bunch of assholes on some key porn website. I mean, if you think that that's some sort of a life, you are sadly mistaken. All right. I mean, you know, this is why a lot of these youths are calling up the true conservative radio program, uh, you know, with these unoriginal prank calls and these stupid, you know, anime monikers and all this other crap, because it's the parents. And I think that the youth today needs to look at their parents and really analyze whether or not their parents actually took care of them, or if they grow up, they're going to have to take care of their parents. And the reason I'm saying that the youth of America probably shouldn't take care of their parents because their parents didn't leave them a goddamn thing. I mean, I don't feel sorry for elderly people anymore. I used to. I don't feel sorry for elderly people anymore. I don't give a crap. They were the ones responsible for what's going on today. The elders are the ones that are responsible for this current uh, ridiculous socialistic situation. So that's exactly why I think Social Security should be wiped out. And I, I would love to see the look on these dumbass seniors' faces when they no longer have that extra 1000 a month that they can throw on their you know, Cadillac via the Social Security system. Because it's not fair that these young people, and remember, young people, you were told to go to college by your mammies, by your daddies, they told you to go to college, even if you didn't have a scholarship, even if you didn't have the money for it. Oh, you can go and get a student loan for fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety, a hundred thousand dollars, and everything will be okay. And look at what happened. All you supposed educated morons are out there in a mountain of debt with no economic opportunity, and the debt is so high and is growing so much interest that you will never, ever in your lifetime be able to pay that debt off. You're never going to be able to do it. So you screwed yourself. You put yourself in serfdom before you even entered the game. Now, who told you to do that? Mommy and Daddy. 
Okay? And the sooner you get that through your head, the sooner you realize how serious this situation is. So I think I'm calling on everybody, pro-constitutionalist, conservative, and capitalist, go out there and spread, spread propaganda like wildfire. All right? Uh, make creative posters. Make creative flyers. Pass them out out there. Make sure to humiliate the idiots that are collecting welfare. I mean, get it, get it on the news out there. You know, put these flyers on the news. I mean, make, make sure that there's so much media spotlight to the repulsive perception of these morons collecting entitlements. We need to humiliate them, folks. I mean, we need to make them feel so low that at some point they're either going to have to come to grips with their own loser perspective or kill themselves. Okay? I mean, let's be honest. And to be, to be completely honest with you, if they kill themselves, I think they'd be doing society a favor. So, I mean, yeah, I'm calling on everybody, especially capitalists. Go out there and spread the goddamn word. Get a blog, get a radio show, to put, put it on YouTube, pass flyers out in your local community, go out there with bullhorns, do whatever it takes, but know what you're talking about. Before you go out there and start spreading all this crap, know what you're talking about, do plenty of research, and remember that we, the individuals that still believe in this capitalist system, the, the people that still believe in the idea of the Constitution, the people that still believe in conserving what America used to be, these individuals are going to go out and they're going to do whatever it takes to bring back what we used to have. Anyway, folks, i got five minutes left in the broadcast. I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. Once again, I do not know when I'm going to have another broadcast here on the Blog Talk Radio Network. Uh, I'd like for everybody to please add me to your Twitter following. It's the best way to figure out when I'm going to conduct one of these live broadcasts. And the Twitter name to follow is Ghost Politics. All one word, no underscores. Ghost Politics is the name to follow. And, of course, folks, I want to hear some comments uh, from you. Uh, please comment on the blog. The blog, of course, is ghostpolitics.blogspot.com. And, uh, of course, if you have anything to say, comments, suggestions, whatever, shoot me an email. All right, the official true conservative email. All right, get this down, get a pad of paper. All right, the official true conservative email is ghostpolitics at yahoo.com. Uh, anyway, folks, uh, I don't know when I'm going to conduct another broadcast, folks. Once again, I know that uh, every time I conduct a broadcast, I'm probably uh, digging myself a deeper and digger, uh, deeper, deeper and deeper situation. Excuse me, with the federal government and with the corporate socialists in Wall Street. But I don't really give a damn, folks. I don't really care anymore. All right, it, 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 you know, I don't care if I'm being followed by the government. I don't care if uh, individuals or follow me around because I'm practicing my constitutionally protected First Amendment right. I don't care. It needs to be said. I will not go out without a fight. I will not continue to live on this earth as long as this stupid capitalist, or this stupid idea of capitalist, quasi-socialist, quasi-communist crap continues to go on. It's not capitalism, folks. No matter what type of face they try to throw on this Goldman Sachs, on this mortgage crap, on this financial reform bill, it's not capitalism. It was socially engineered. It was engineered by these bureaucrats. It was engineered by these Wall Street bastards. And we need to unelect all these idiots in Washington. We need to force term limits on these bureaucrats. We need to eliminate Wall Street. All right? We need to make Wall Street irrelevant. We need to destroy Hollywood. We need to destroy all these things that have done nothing but to put us in the current state of serfdom that we find ourselves in today. And I will not, I will not go quietly. I will continue to do what I'm doing, and I expect that you should do the same, no matter what age you are. Go out there and spread the word that you don't want to be in the bondage of corporate socialist serfdom. You want the Constitution. You want capitalism. You want to be able to put in what you get in. You want to be able to work 
however many hours you want to work, you, you should have the opportunity to gain employment so that you can work and save your capital so that you can get in what you put in like we used to. All right, That's why I'm a businessman. That's why many of the people that belong to my local chamber of commerce are business people, because that's exactly what they did. But this socialist government, this damn leftist liberal regime is trying to take that away from us, folks. And if you're just going to sit on your thumb and not do a goddamn thing about it, well, then you deserve the recourse of this damn government, this damn Wall Street socialist piece of crap, this new health care uh, initiative. You deserve the recourse of all the negative effects that are going to be responsible when implementing these bureaucratic arms. Anyway, folks, once again, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. Please follow me on Twitter. Ghost Politics is the name to follow. And remember to go ahead and shoot me an email, ghostpolitics at yahoo.com. And, of course, the official website of the True Conservative Radio program, folks, blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. Uh, anyway, folks, I hope that you take my commentary as serious as a heart attack, and I hope you go out there, and I hope that I see uh, you know, some serious protests out there. I hope I see death to the welfare state written out there somewhere. I hope I see propaganda flyers and posters uh, completely humiliating those that are on the welfare state, that are mooching off the welfare state, disrespecting the corporate socialists of Wall Street, disrespecting these power-hungry bureaucrats in Washington. We need you to get on the front lines. Go out there and tell these morons how it is. Anyway, thank you very much for listening. Long live the conservative movement, death to feminism, and death, death, death to the welfare state. Boar's Head is bringing a slice of Japan to the deli. Introducing Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki-style chicken. Tender, slow-roasted chicken breast, coated in our signature teriyaki glaze, where ginger, garlic, and a hint of brown sugar meet for a flavor that's both sweet and savory. New Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki-style chicken. The bold flavor of Japan, now at the deli. Only from Boar's Head. Compromise elsewhere.